If you had to give yourself a job description, tweet out a job description, how would you describe what you do? I'm the person in charge. <laughs> what are you in charge of? I am the number two to the CNO for operations, strategy, and plan. So I represent them uh, in uh, senior level discussions, and then I help formulate recommendations and op uh, options for him as the chief of naval operations uh, when we're having discussions of how the world is postured and what our reaction should be. So it's exciting and challenging work. Uh, over my career, I've literally been the person in charge when I've had command of a ship or command of a strike group, and those are exciting and wonderful leadership times. You've had an extraordinary leadership journey, and with that comes very challenging times. When was your resilience tested most as a leader? Uh, actually, one of the more uh, recent uh, missions. So in 2009, I went out and I took command of the Counterpiracy Task Force. And then uh, about three or four days into the job, Captain Phillips was kidnapped. And so you're new to a job, your uh, task force is a very complicated organization. Uh, you have multitude of ships, some of the ships are from other countries. And then you're trying to synchronize and organize all of this capability uh, and focus around a mission that no one has ever done before. So um, as uh, naval forces, we do boardings, we do uh, a lot of different type of work at sea, but there certainly wasn't anybody I could turn to and say, how do you rescue someone from a life raft? How do you do negotiations with pirates at sea? There, it had never been done before. Uh, and pretty clear to me, the challenge as the task force leader was defining the mission correctly in the very first few hours. You've got a multitude of ships, uh, you've got sailors and marines, uh, you've got intelligence support coming in. And it would have been very easy, I think, for us to define that mission as to take out the pirates. But that would be the wrong mission success. The correct mission success would be bringing Captain Phillips home safely. But it's interesting, it doesn't sound like a big difference, but getting the correct mission defined and early communicating that to people lets people focus on what the end state needs to be. The incorrect mission success, taking out pirates, might we meant we, we could do that very easily, but we might have lost Captain Phillips as well. You have in your current role incredible responsibilities and often sometimes huge burdens that I would imagine create situations where it is lonely at the top. How do you deal with that type of stress and even pressure sometimes given the role that, that you've taken on? Well, some of us are quite comfortable with the loneliness. So I think some of it's uh, um, your personality type. So the uh, I've often thought about that because for the Navy, uh, the epitome is to growing up to be commanding officer of a ship or commanding officer of a squadron or, or a strike group. And those are very isolating jobs. And I, and I sit there and go, you know, what's great about that job is there is a degree of isolation in being in charge because you have to be self-sufficient. You are the decision maker for everything and it affects everybody's lives as they're all on that ship, whether they're embarked Marines or the sailors who work there every day. Uh, if you're an introvert, that's a quite comfortable place to be. On the other hand, if you're an extrovert, there's a lot about being a CO that's about communicating to the crew, making sure the sailors and Marines know when they're doing a good job. So there's aspects of the job that feed an extrovert personality. So. I, as I grew up, understood the responsibilities and uh, the burdens that came with being a CO, so I, I didn't feel uncomfortable uh, as a commanding officer. You are a woman who has accomplished so many extraordinary things, and you were uh, named the, the Navy's first four-star female admiral. Uh, extraordinary accomplishment, an extraordinary moment in history. What was that moment like for you when you received the news that this was happening? In my career, uh, I was the first woman to graduate from Annapolis to reach the rank of flag officer. I was the first African-American woman to command a ship. I was the first African-American woman in any of the services to reach three star. The biggest shift in my life was after I took command of Rushmore because something 
historical, a milestone like that is not contained within the Navy. Uh, and I was astonished when I started to get letters uh, and correspondence and phone calls from people outside the Navy and what that event meant to them, whether they were veterans or a 12-year-old girl at a Fisk science summer camp. There, there's, a, to me, an obligation to this public, not only a war-fighting obligation that I signed up for, there became a greater obligation of the role model. And it doesn't matter what your individual goals are, you are a role model. So I, when I became the first African-American woman three-star in all of the services, uh, as I went about my daily life, even outside of the Navy, it was pretty clear how significant it was. Uh, so, uh, civilians coming up and approaching me uh, and asking questions, um, parents who want to meet you, uh, citizens who just want to meet you and ask you how did it, how did it happen, and providing an accessibility to the American public, which I believe I, I owe them.